All right, in this video, I'm going to talk to you real quick about the mean value theorem, which is something I'd intended to tell you about when I told you about the definition of the derivative, but I just didn't really have time. So first, I'm going to start off with Rolle's theorem. Now, Rolle's theorem says that if you've got a differentiable function on a closed interval where the y values at the edges of the closed interval are the same, so I'll, let me just draw you a picture of this. This is A, and this is B, and whatever f of A is, is the same as whatever f of B is, right? It's just on the same y level. Okay, what we're saying is if f is differentiable, which means it has a nice smooth graph with no vertical tangent, sharp corners, discontinuities, then it's going to necessarily be the case that I've got at least one flat spot, okay? So the way we'll say that algebraically is then f prime of c is equal to zero just for some value of c between a and b. Okay. Now, you know, like it definitely could be the case that f prime of c is equal to zero everywhere if the function was just constant. But, you know, the idea is that if it's not constant and, say, it goes down, then it's going to have to go back up. Okay? And now I'm not going to prove this theorem for you in this video. I will have a video of the proof of Rolle's theorem linked in the description. Okay? Uh, here we're just getting the idea. So there's at least one place with a flat tangent, which is where the derivative is zero, and then that would be that particular value of c. Right, we're saying that there's at least one, not that there's just one, because we could have a situation like that, right, where we'd have here would be a value of c where f prime of c equals zero, and here would be another. So, for example, if we're given a table of values of a differentiable function on a closed interval, then we could probably identify an interval on which there must be a flat tangent by just finding, okay, where is, are there any intervals on which g of x is constant? And yeah, if we look here from 2 to 6, f or g of x goes from negative 1 to 4 to negative 1. Okay, so there must be, point down here, because g is differentiable, And uh, g of 2 is the same as g of 6, which is negative 1. Really, it doesn't even matter that it equals negative 1. Just because g is differentiable and g of 2 equals g of 6, there is a c with f prime of c equals, or g prime of c equals 0 on the interval 2 to 6. Now the mean value theorem is the same idea. It's going to be that the we're going to have a guaranteed value of the derivative, except for this one we're not going to you know, expect that the values of the function are equal at the endpoints of the closed intervals. We're going to let them be whatever they're going to be. So. So what it's going to tell us is that you've got here f of a, and here you've got f of b. And, you know, I'm not saying that f of b has to necessarily be bigger than f of a. I'm just drawing it that way. Okay, so this is going to be f of a. Up here we'll have f of b. And this will be a and b. What we're saying here is that, okay, there's some slope of the line connecting these two points, okay? Uh, we call that the secant line, right? That has slope given by f of b minus f of a so f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Okay, that's the average rate of change of f over the closed interval a to b. Okay, what the mean value theorem is telling us is that there must be a place where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant line. So the way I'll write that is 
that, is, that the derivative of f at some point c has to be equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, just at some place in the open interval a to b, so like between a and b, like I was saying before. Okay, so let me draw you a picture of this. So if it's smooth, then, you know, maybe, well, it's supposed to be smooth. Hold on, let me draw something that's smooth through the points. So, you know, something like that. Well, there's going to be a point probably, let's see, I'd say probably about here. That was not very good. Somewhere in there, pretty close to there, is going to be a place where the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. Okay, let's see if I can draw a different one that might be a little easier to work with. Kind of like these. Okay, this one's going to have two of them. Okay, and I'll kind of show you. Here's one. Yeah, and then here's the other. Okay, where these are all parallel. Okay. So this would be one value of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem, and, and here would just be another one. Okay, so there's at least one place where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of the secant. And much like Rolle's theorem, I'm not going to prove the mean value theorem for you directly in this video, um, but you know that'll be linked down in the description. The let's let's wrap up with a mean value theorem example. Now at this point, I'm not really assuming you know any of the derivative rules, so it's going to you know we're not really able to compute any of these places where the derivative equals the average rate of change yet. But there will be plenty of time for that in the units that are coming. Figure above shows the graph of a function f of x. On the closed interval a to b, how many values of c satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem? Now, okay, I'll admit I did not get this from an actual, you know, AP exam or anything. Um, I think that more likely, I mean, I think that this is definitely a question that they can ask, uh, but more likely to ask it for you, satisfy the equation f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. I think that's a more likely way for, for us to ask this question now. Rather than just knowing, relying on you to know the mean value theorem by the name mean value theorem, just to know it by its conclusion. So, right, what we're saying is, let's try to get, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, we got that slope of the secant line right here. The question is, okay, satisfies that equation or satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem, how many times is this tangent line parallel to this secant line? And it's looking to me like four, because I'm seeing, you know, probably about there, about here, somewhere in there, and about there as well. Okay, so I'm going to say that's four times. And I think that's all I got for you for this video.